I'm going to share to you this morning, and this is dedicated to all mothers. But even though you are not a mother, some of you are young people, praise God, some of you are men who are with me this morning, I will assure you that at the end of this message, praise God, Jesus, hallelujah, emphasizes that all can be a mother. Even men, I will assure you, praise God. I will show you the scripture. Everybody shall praise the Lord. So, parang nagdududa kayong mga kapatid, ha? Praise God. Have you ever greet your mother this morning? I tried but I failed because there's no signal in our place. Praise God. Hallelujah to greet our mother, our mother-in-law. Ang lahat ng may mga mother-in-law, ito sa kamay. Amen. Praise God. Ang lahat na friend nila, kanilang mother-in-law, taalala yung mga kapatid. Praise God. At friend din nila, kanilang mother, nasa kamay. Praise the Lord. There are eight mothers in the Bible play a key role in the coming of Jesus Christ. None of them was perfect. I repeat it again. None of them was perfect. Yet, each showed strong faith in God. And God in turn rewarded them for their confidence in Him. These mothers live in an age when women were often treated as second class citizens. Yet, God appreciated their true value and worth just as He does today. Motherhood, everybody shout motherhood. Motherhood. Is one of life's highest calling for women. So learn how these eight mothers in the Bible put their hope in the God of the impossible and how He proved that such hope is always well placed. Amen. Everybody shout amen. amen. The first mother that I'm going to share to you this morning is no other than Eve. Praise God. Eve, Eve is the mother of all the living. Yeah. Yeah. If you are breathing today, your very mother at the very beginning of the story of humanity goes back to Eve. Eve was the first woman and the first mother. Without a single rule, model, or mentor, she paid the material, maternal way to become mother of all the living. Her name means living thing. Or life. That's the meaning of Eve. Praise God. Living thing. Or life. Since Eve experienced fellowship with God before sin and the fall, she probably knew God more intimately than any other woman after her. Before sin and fall, Eve was talking to God. If there is a woman in the Bible, no one can beat Eve. Hallelujah. I repeat it again. Since Eve experienced fellowship with God before sin and the fall, she probably knew God the more intimately than any other woman after the fall in Garden of Eden. Amen. Everybody shall amen. amen. She and her make her husband Adam live in paradise. But they spoiled it by listening to Satan instead of God. Yeah. Eve suffered terrible grief when her son Cain murdered his brother Abel. Yet despite these tragedies, Eve went on to fulfill her part in God's plan of populating the earth. The first mother also suffered and experienced sorrow and pain in his heart. With their own children, praise God, hallelujah, when Cain killed Abel. What a pain in the 
heart or a mother. Everybody shout, praise the Lord. The number two mother that I'm going to present to you in the Bible that have the key rules in the coming of Jesus Christ is Sarah. Everybody shout Sarah. Sarah. The wife of Abraham. Sarah was one of the most important women in the Bible. I said one of the most important women in the Bible. She was the wife of Abraham which made her the mother of the nation of Israel. She shared in Abraham's journey to the promised land and all of the promises God would fulfill in the particular land of promise. Sometimes we lift, up, we lift out Sarah in the story of faith of Abraham. But don't you imagine, hallelujah, when the Bible said, Abraham went to a country that he did not even know, yet his wife trusted her, his, uh, her husband. That's a very difficult decision for women. When Sarah asked her husband, Dad, where are we going? And Abraham would just answer, I don't know. We will just follow God and we will walk by faith. So when Abraham walked by faith, do you think Sarah did not walk by faith? Everybody shall amen. amen. Yet Sarah was barren. But oh, see Sarah. She conceived through a miracle in spite of her old age. If you are now in an old age, just pray for a miracle. <laughs> I told Sister Pink, I think we need one more girl so that we'll be balanced. And she answered me, I am already old. She was a good wife. Sarah was a good wife. A loyal helper and a builder with Abraham. Now think about this. Abraham is well known in the Bible, says 13, an altar builder. Abraham always built an altar. And out, praise God, of the sin, it was not written by Moses. Hallelujah. Just imagine with me. The role of his wife, Sarah, with him. Her husband made an altar or built an altar. Sarah was there. Sarah maybe an assistant. Hallelujah to put stones. Hallelujah to, to, to fire the woods. Praise God. But it was not written. Because sometimes mother, praise God, working behind the scene. Yes. Everybody shall be there. Of her, of 
of his wife, Rebecca. During an age when women were typically submissive, that was an age that women, Sister Daisy, is commonly and typically submissive to their husband. But Rebecca was quite assertive. Lahat ng mga asawa noon, babae, ay nagpapasakot talaga sa kanila mga asawang lalaki. But Rebecca was quite assertive. At times, Rebecca took matters into her own hands. Sometimes that worked out, but it, so, it also resulted in a disastrous consequences. She paid for, hallelujah, Jacob, and her dad, paid, uh, and, uh, her husband, paid for Esau. And there is a division in the house. And they almost killed each other. And Rebecca helped Jacob to steal the blessing of the birthright. It worked out, but sometimes it brings the disastrous consequences. Everybody shall be. Yeah. Who among the mother here just came to abroad without the approval of your husband? You just sympathize in your house. <laughs> Juki Bed, everybody shout Juki Bed. Juki Bed was the fourth mother in the Bible that had a key role in the coming of Jesus Christ. Juki Bed is not well known sometimes. She is the mother of Moses. And do you know her husband? Her husband was named Amram. That's the father of Moses, Aaron and Miriam. Jukibet, the mother of Moses, Aaron and Miriam, is one of the underappreciated mothers in the Bible. Some of you did not even know that the mother of Moses was Jukibet until now. Because Jukibet is underappreciated mother. So if you are an underappreciated mother of all your door to door, don't worry. <laughs> May kasama kang Jukibet. Sometimes, hallelujah, you have done your part, you have done all your effort to build your house, to buy house and lot. To establish a business there, you send a lot of capital until now you are not appreciated of all you have done. Yes. Welcome, Jupiter is with you. <laughs> Alam ko maraming mga nanay umiiyak minsan sa gabi sa lahat ng ginagawa nila sa pamilya nila pero hindi sila na-appreciate. Amen. O tumatangot-tangot, ibig sabihin isa pa kayo doon. Jukibed is one of the underappreciated mothers in the Bible. Yet she also showed tremendous faith in God. Amen. So if you think that you are underappreciated, they could not appreciate all your efforts and goodness and kindness, generosity to your family, just maintain a strong faith in God. Ensuring 
that Israel's great leader would grow up under the godly influence of his own mother during his most formative years in the land of Egypt. Just imagine with this, the Pharaoh declared, all boys aged two years old under will be killed. And this juki man, hallelujah, if you are that juki man, do you have the guts, hallelujah, to lead your baby and drink in the Nile River? That Nile River, they said, that it was invested, praise God, with so many crocodiles. But juki man, the Bible said, when they saw Moses, that he was a proper child, a handsome child, hallelujah. They have faith in God. To let the baby a dream. Praise God in Nile River. Do you think if you are that mother, you have that kind of faith? But should you man, maintain a strong faith in God that somehow in the journey of the baby in the Nile River, God will do something a miracle of the child. God used Moses mightily to free the Hebrew people from their 400 year bondage to slavery and take them to the promised land. The writer of Hebrews pays a tribute to Chukimen. Hallelujah. Showing that her faith allowed her to see the importance of saving her child's life so that he might in turn save when Jukimen saved the life of her own child, in turn, for the last 80 years, that baby saved also her family and the people of Israel. You have no faith. But you must have a strong faith in God. That whatsoever you sow in your children, whatsoever you have prayed for the best of your children, one day you will also reap the harvest, hallelujah, of God's bountiful blessings of your prayer to your own children. And above all, brother, let know that we will walk in the fear of the Lord. is written about Jukimen in the Bible. Her story speaks powerfully to mothers of today. The writer of the book of Hebrews gave a tribute to Jukimen. Can be found in Hebrews 11.23 and this is what the Bible said. By faith Moses when he was born was hid three months of his parents. This is the only verse in the Bible that gave a tribute to Jukimen. They did not even mention the name of his father and the name of Jukimen. But the writer of Hebrew pays a tribute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Declaring the faith of his parents. Yeah. Why did Jukimen, hallelujah, have this kind of God? Of all Jewish mothers, they just watch their children being cut by the sword of they just watch their little baby boy be hidden by the army of peril. But Jukimen said, no, 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 no. I will not allow my son to be killed by the armies of peril. Why? When, he, when she saw the child, this is what the Bible said, because they saw he was a proper child. Amen. He was a proper child. Amen. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Did you see the faith of Jukimen? Yeah. They were not even afraid of the king's commandment. Why? Her faith is very strong yeah. in the Bible. Yeah. Clap your hands to the Lord. Wow. So I'm going to ask you mothers, 
Let us have that kind of faith Amen. in God. Amen. Hannah is another woman in the Bible that plays a key role in the coming of Jesus Christ. Hannah, the mother of Samuel the prophet. Hannah's story is one of the most touching story in all of the entire Bible. Did you hear me? Her story is one of the most touching, very emotional, praise God, story, madrama, the story in the Bible. Like several other mothers in the Bible, she know what it meant to suffer long years of barrenness. Hannah is also a barren woman. I hope you have noticed this morning the lines and the presentations of names. Hallelujah, that have done key roles in the coming of Jesus Christ. How they have become so faithful and how they put their trust in God even though they know exactly that they were not able to bear children. But yet, history praise God tells us, hallelujah, that even the physical, physical difficulties and deficiencies, it still proves that God is a miraculous In Hannah's case, she was cruelly taunted by her husband's other wife. Pinina was there. She always taunted Hannah. But Hannah never gave up on God. It did not say, Hannah did not give up to her husband. No, no. Hannah did not give up on God. Finally, her heartfelt prayers were answered. This is a picture that a mother, hallelujah, that is strong in faith, have also a strong connection to God in terms of prayer. I repeat again, mothers should have a strong connection to God in terms of prayer. Her heartfelt prayers were answered. She gave birth to a son, Samuel. Then did something entirely selfless to honor her promise to God. And do you know, when Hannah decided selflessly to give Samuel for the ministry of the temple. Listen to me carefully. I know some of you know about the story. But I will give more emphasis on this. Do you know why? Praise God. That when Sarah longed for a child because she wants to... Uh, to stop the suffering of so many criticisms and taunting of the other wife. Praise God. The Bible said, Lord, if you give me a son, if you give me a child, I will lend this child to you. Amen. Lending, ipahiram, hiro hindi. Ang lens of this, I mean, I will give you this son. Just my womb will be open. Matanggal lang ang pagkabao ko. Because the Bible said she was barren for a long time. And she prayed like a drunkard woman. Hallelujah before the high priest Eli. Praise God. And she cried in the temple of God. God, give me a child or I die. Wala naman siguro nag-pray dito na, Lord, give me a husband or I die. <laughs> Pero kung gawin nyo yan, baka, no? Bili. Bawag na lang, sige, mas tutas sa may iya. Lord, give me a husband or I die. I will lay hands on you. So Hannah prayed for a son. And when God answered him a son, what did she do? She bring the child. She gave the child to the temple. Praise God to be a priest, an assistant. And you know what happened? He became the greatest prophet in the history of Israel. Now look at this. When Hannah gave the child Samuel back 
to God. And God saw, nakita na Diyos, wala ka ng bata, binigay mo na sa akin. What did God do? Listen to this. God favored Hannah again with, with five more children. Bringing great blessings to her life. Ang baong nakaanin ba? The married woman, praise God, have six children. Talo ka pa, sister, may dapat may pangapang, praise God. <laughs> Everybody say, so praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So if you give God, mother, if you give God, God will return to you more more blessings. Elizabeth was another 
of the miracle mothers in the Bible. 